Hi guys, welcome to Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. In today's video I'm going to try and build my version of a Viking funeral. This was inspired by a recent trip to Norway and certainly got my creative juices flowing. So I ordered this Viking longboat made by Revel and would build my base around this. So to give my build a solid base, I took a piece of plywood and cut out the hull of the boat so I could mock this up and plan my position. I played around with this a little and took some measurements and decided on a good position. I gave the edges of the plywood a quick sand down so there would be no chance of splinters. Then I cut some polystyrene sheets to size with a sharp blade this would provide some bulk to my build. Then using some grab adhesive, I glued the polystyrene onto my base. I continued with this until I had the height that I thought I would need. I wanted to incorporate a kind of glacial cave type of thing to, to represent the passing from the mortal world into the realm of the gods. I built this up using the same methods as before. And it was at this point I realized how big this build was gonna be. <laughs> I cursed myself for not building smaller things, but I committed to my idea and decided to push on. I reached for my Proxen hot wire cutter and began to carve some shapes into the polystyrene. I realized I should have been more sparing with the adhesive as the hot wire cutter didn't like cutting through it, but with some gentle persuasion, I made it work. I continued to add and remove pieces of polystyrene until I was happy with the shape. And I used some of these offcuts to further extend the shoreline. Next, I mixed up some sculptor mold, using only a little at a time so it wouldn't cure in my pot while I was working. For once, I remembered to wear gloves, so cleanup was minimal. I followed the contours I had carved, left it rough in some places, and at times used a little water to smooth it out, and let this fully dry. In the meantime, I thought I would begin to build the boat. I thought this would be a simple step as I'm pretty familiar with putting miniatures and models together, but I was surprised at how complicated this actually was and it really took quite some time. But I managed and I was really happy with the result and quality of the model. I masked up some of the shields and gave the whole model a coat of grey primer. Then I had the idea of building a little jetty, which this final journey to Valhalla could be launched from. So I took some little wooden dowels I had laying around, and with the help of my Dremel, I set about making my jetty.
It was really fun to put this together and I love these little unexpected mini projects that can come up within bigger projects. I even took some string and bound the logs together for added realism. Then I cut some coffee stirrers to size and glued these into place as floorboards. Nice. Mini project complete. I wanted to add some LEDs to represent fire so I picked a spot and carefully drilled a hole to run my wiring through. Then I powered up my airbrush and began applying some base colours to my longbow. I undercoated the sail in white with the brush so as not to get any overspray on the rest of the model. The next task was to test and begin working with the LEDs. I chose to go with a mix of LEDs using a super bright LED to help with the luminescence and a few flickering orange LEDs to represent the fire. Then I carefully threaded them through the hole and taped the various sets of wiring together for ease of identification. I soldered these onto battery holders mounted on the underside of my plywood. Next I gave my model a liberal coat of PVA to seal the porous plaster underneath. And while this was drying, I took the opportunity to fill the edges and tidy things up a little. First I tried some car filler, only because I had some of this spare, and then went over this with some drywall filler and sanded it when dry. Once the PVA was dry, I applied a good coat of gesso this would not only further help seal everything, but also gave me a nice surface to apply paint to. I realized I jumped the gun a little and wanted to add a few slithers of slate to kind of represent a walkway. So with a little more sculptor mold, I bedded these and repeated my process to seal it. Then I broke up some chunks of plaster and started to add these as bits of broken ice. And then I began to work on the funeral pyre for this Viking's final voyage. 
This was just built up with some square sticks of balsa wood. I then glued some fiber optic strands onto the heads of the LEDs to represent little burning embers when lit up. I left these slightly longer than needed so I could carefully cut these to my desired length once I had built my fire. I then applied some of my homemade wash using some black ink, some water, some acrylic medium and a little dish soap. and use this same mix to quickly wash the rest of the wood on the boat. I mixed up some creamy brown wash and applied this all over to instantly age the fabric. I then started to paint in the pattern with some red paint. Then I got really brave and painted my glacial cave blue. I started with a much darker colour than I intended for the final outcome because I wanted some deeper, darker shadowy areas. And while this was drying, I quickly came in with a little more gesso and mixed this directly on the model to create some nice smooth gradients. This process went back and forth a little until I was happy with the colors and then I sprayed a little blue from below to further deepen the shadows and bring out the texture a little. I based my jetty with some dark brown and slowly I can see things coming together a little. Next, because of the size of the model, I wanted to try out a homemade snow paste to act as a mass for the fallen snow as the diorama was pretty big. I didn't know how much snow flock would be needed to cover it. So I thought I could make as much of this snow paste as I need to help me getting out of trouble. I used some acrylic structure gel mixed with some PVA and a little water to thin and a good helping of bicarbonate of soda to give me some snow texture. and applied this where I thought the snow would gather. And as a first time experiment, I think this worked out pretty well. Next, I got some cotton balls and pulled these apart and slowly began gluing these onto my wooden pyre to make flames and smoke.
taking care to pull the fiber optic wires through the cotton. I then painted this with some yellow, orange and black. Next came the resin for my water. I measured this out in equal parts as directed on the bottle and mixed in a little paint, a drop at a time, to get the colour I was after. And pouring from a good height, I carefully poured this out onto the base. Then using a spatula, I teased the resin into all the little nooks and crannies between the ice. I kept a little of my blue paint mixture from the glacier and tinted some plaster debris. And as the resin was drying, I sprinkled this into it to represent all the little bits of ice debris that may have broken off. I mixed in a little white paint to further give the illusion of frozen water and mixed this back and forth until I was happy with the level of dispersion. Once everything was dry, I used some spray varnish to add some Woodland Scenic Snow Flock, as I had a big jar of this and wanted to save my good stuff for the top layer, but more about that later. Next I want to send a huge shout out to Tommy at Zitities and Knock, who sent me a winter themed care package. Links to their websites below. Be sure to check them out as they make some really great modelling products. Now first on my list was this ice crystal paste. Let's see what it does. I applied it to the edges of the boat and around the base of the hull. Then I wanted to make some large icicles, so I cut up some thin dagger shapes from a cover of an old binder and glued these into shape. Then I whipped out some iced sapfen, which translates to icicles. I really love this stuff and it's great fun to work with, but I found out it was best applied in small doses to achieve the best icicles. But I wanted giant ones. So I tried to use it in a way that it probably wasn't designed for, but I think it worked out pretty well. Let me know in the comments below if you agree.
Then I mixed up some snow paste, thinned with just a little water and applied this to various parts of the boat. Again, this stuff is great and looks really realistic when it's dry. Next I wanted to try something that basically translates to waves. I wanted to make some ripples and I think it worked out great but in the end I changed the water again but again that's something we'll come back to at the end. Next up was one of my favourite products from Nock, Snowflakes, which is very different to the Snowflock from Woodland Scenics. This one almost seems to be made from really small fibres and has little glitter added for additional sparkles. I popped some in a makeshift sieve and slowly let it snow, fixing it with some spray varnish. I added a layer of gloss Mod Podge to try to recreate some waves and movement in the sea but once dry I really didn't like the effect this gave and, but I hid this with another thin layer of resin. I painted up a somber looking viking to stare out and wish his brother a good passage with many victories along the way. And that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I've learned a lot from doing this snow scene as it was my first attempt to work with snow in any way. This idea started as wanting to do some sort of ice cave but evolved into quite an ambitious project pulling together some of the skills I've learned along the way and learning a few new ones too. If you have liked what you've seen you can support the channel by subscribing to stay up to date with all the latest videos, smashing the like button to let YouTube know you appreciate this kind of video and perhaps share it with a friend who you think might find it interesting. A huge thank you to Zitides and Nock for their continued support and thank you all for watching. Enjoy.